Ever since people started getting access to CS2, they were complaining about the differences in comparison with CSGO. One of those differences was the subtick system, for which I'm also responsible because I've made this video full of wrong claims, which skyrocketed in popularity, and also this video where I correct those wrong claims, which isn't nearly as popular. So let's start from the beginning. In Counter Strike, there is a tick rate. Tick rate tells you how many times the game state updates every second. A tick is essentially a snapshot of the game. In Global Offensive, time between ticks doesn't exist. The server sends the game state of every tick to your computer, and your computer guesses what happened between the ticks based on some interpolation. With 64 tick rate, the game state updates every 60 milliseconds, which is usually good enough, but all CSGO tournaments and third party matchmaking services use 1 to an 8 tick. With CS2, Valve introduced the sub tick update system. Servers still run on a tick rate, but user inputs are timestamped, so the server has more precise data about them. In Global Offensive, when you click, the game waits for the next tick before you actually shoot. So when two players click on each other's head in the time between two ticks, it doesn't matter whose input was received first. As long as both the inputs are received between the same two ticks, the outcome of the gunfight will be random. This is where CS2 has the upper hand. User inputs are timestamped, so when two players click on each other's head in the time between two ticks, even though the game waits until the next tick for the shot to happen, it sees the exact timing of those inputs, so the player whose input was registered first, even if just by a few tenths of a millisecond, will always win this gunfight. The position of your crosshair is timestamped together with your inputs as well, meaning that when you click and move your crosshair before a tick happens, your gun will shoot where you were aiming during the click, not during the tick like in Global Offensive. I think this is a great innovation, but as everything, it has flaws. The most frequently mentioned one is that it can look weird, because sometimes you shoot somewhere you aren't aiming during the actual firing animation. A lot of comments under my second video were saying that Valve should make the firing animation client-sided, so that it would trigger right as you click. But that brings us back to the duel where both players click between the same two ticks. With client-sided animations, both players would see their gun fire at the enemy's head, but only one of them would actually kill the enemy. I totally understand that Valve wouldn't want this feature in their game. So we probably cannot fix the issue, but we surely can make it better. Because if you increase the tick rate, there is simply less time for any misalignment between the server and clients to happen. But the thing with CS2 is that 64 tick is hardcoded into the source code, meaning that it's impossible to run a CS2 game at any other tick rate. But I didn't want to end this video without a conclusion, and just speculating about how much 1 to 8 tick would improve the game also wasn't enough. So I made this website where I try to visualize the tick rate difference between the tick rate systems. It's available for everyone to try, the link is in the description. The website consists of two tests you can try. The first one is the inaccuracy test, where an orange mark appears where you click, and a green mark will appear where your cursor is at the next tick, but both of them appear at the same time at the next tick. The orange mark is where your bullet would go in CS2, and the green one is where it would have gone in CSGO. If you still don't understand how the subtick system works, setting the tick rate to a low number will surely help you. You can play with the settings however you want, I have really tried to make the website stupid proof. The second test is a visualization of the delays caused by 64 and 128 tick. You select the tick rate and after you click, the screen flashes for a duration of the maximum delay possible within that tick rate. You can also try the guessing mode where the screen flashes and you have to guess whether it was 60 milliseconds, the maximum delay of 64 tick, or 8 milliseconds, the maximum delay of 128 tick. That one is actually quite easy, I could guess the difference correctly about 80% of the time. And that's all I've had for this video, so let me know about your experience on the website in the comments and thank you for watching.